Hello, welcome. I'm Dr. Tony Malioko, and I'm the Cancer Informant. Welcome to today's podcast. Today's podcast is focused on lung cancer. We'll talk about the risk factors for lung cancer, how lung cancer is diagnosed, how lung cancer is classified, and most importantly, how lung cancer is treated. This podcast is dedicated to patients and is intended to give patients information that they will find useful in the management and treatment of their own cancers. So to begin with, lung cancer is really a devastating cancer. It's the most common cause of mortality from cancer, despite it not actually being the most common cancer. Cancers of the breast and prostate are more common than lung cancer, but their survivability is much higher. Unfortunately, lung cancer is frequently diagnosed at an advanced stage, which makes treatment difficult. However, there have been remarkable advances in both the improvements in early diagnosis of her lung cancer and in selection and use of optimal treatments for patients with lung cancer. First, let's consider what are risk factors for lung cancer. The biggest risk factor, as you probably know, is smoking. So a history of smoking, and particularly for many years or long periods of smoking or smoking heavily, one or more packs a day, can certainly increase dramatically the risk of developing lung cancer. If one ceases smoking, the risk will uh, decrease. So actually, it's always a good idea, if you are a smoker, to stop smoking as soon as you can. In addition, if you actually do have lung cancer and you continue to smoke, the smoking can interfere with the effectiveness of a variety of treatments. So it's always a wise idea to um, discontinue smoking if, if you are a smoker. Fortunately, the frequency of smoking has decreased dramatically over the last 30 years. And as a consequence, the incidence of lung cancer has also fallen. Lung cancer is still more common amongst men and men are more likely to die if they do get lung cancer. So it still remains a significant problem. In fact, if smoking was completely eliminated, lung cancer would still probably be the third most common cancer and a major cause of death from cancer. So smoking is only part of the story. Lung cancers can be caused by other factors, um, things in the environment, environmental toxins or pollutants, um, exposure to radiation, certain kinds of uh, industrial exposures, such as asbestos, and um, certain types of, um, of uh, environmental uh, minerals and so on can also be risk factors for, um, for the development of lung cancer. So there are many risk factors for lung cancer and also inherited uh, conditions. So you may inherit, it, inherit cancer risk genes, um, from your parents that can also increase your risk of lung cancer. So what are the symptoms of lung cancer? Well, lung cancer can present in a variety of ways. Um, it may present with a chronic cough or shortness of breath. Um, there might be productive sputum or blood in the sputum. So these can all be worrisome signs. Another symptom might be a persistent pneumonia that uh, keeps recurring or, or won't respond well to treatment. Lung cancer may also show up on an incidental x-ray where uh, basically a shadow can be seen on the lung um, that can be the first indication of lung cancer. Unfortunately, lung cancer might also present in the metastatic form where it could present as a metastasis, for example, causing a seizure due to metastasis to the brain or a bone fracture due to involvement of a bone, which leads to its weakening and breakage. So these are all um, ways that a lung cancer can present. Um, how can you detect lung cancer earlier? Are there screening technologies for lung cancer? Um, unfortunately, there aren't really effective screening. Uh, one of the technologies that's currently being evaluated is um, low-dose CT X-ray scans. Um, particularly focused on individuals who are considered to be at high risk of lung cancer. So these would be, for example, patients with a long history of smoking 
uh, would undergo periodic examination by a CT scan, which would be able to detect a, a small lesion in the lung. So how is lung cancer then diagnosed? Well, to really diagnose lung cancer, you need a tissue diagnosis. And this can be challenging. So if there is a small lesion in the lung, one of the first approaches that is typically used is either a bronchoscopy, where a tube is placed down into the airways through a fiber optic, and a, a biopsy of, uh, of an intratracheal or intrabronchial lesion is done, where cells are removed and sent to a pathologist to examine and make a diagnosis. Another way is uh, via putting in a needle. So a very thin but long needle can be placed into the shadow or into the lump in the lung, and the cells can be extracted out and placed on a slide. When these are removed and stained, a pathologist can again examine them and determine if, if a cancer is present. In other cases, there may need to actually be an open lung biopsy where uh, a surgeon, a thoracic surgeon, will open the chest cavity and remove a portion of the lung, perhaps a wedge biopsy, uh, to remove that lesion and send it to pathology uh, for evaluation. Now, what other conditions can mimic lung cancer? Well, things that can cause chronic coughing are, are things like emphysema or chronic bronchitis or asthma uh, can certainly mimic symptoms of, of lung cancer. Um, other things can cause shadows in the lung. For example, a tuberculosis lesion can appear much like a lung cancer. Certain kinds of fungal in infections can also appear uh, to mimic lung cancer. And um, there can be metastasis from other cancers. For example, a colon cancer or a prostate cancer might spread to the lung. And this can lead to a confusion that this is a primary lung cancer, where it's really a metastasis from another cancer. It's important to tell this apart because the staging and the treatment will be completely different for a primary lung cancer versus a cancer that spread to the lung from another organ in a, in a patient. So it's very important that a correct diagnosis uh, be made. Now, there are several different kinds of, of lung cancer. So um, the, the major types are non-small cell lung cancer, which is often uh, ad an adenocarcinoma. There can be large cell lung cancer, squamous cell cancer, small cell lung cancer, and mesothelioma. So these are the, the major histologic types of cancer. By histology, we mean the way that cancer cells look when you examine them by a microscope, so that a small cell cancer is actually made up of cells that look relatively small to the pathologist, hence, hence it's got its name. And uh, a large cell lung cancer is a cancer that's composed of fairly big cells. Um, some people now think that large cell cancers are a, a variety of uh, squamous cell cancers. And uh, again, the use of purely morphologic and histological uh, evaluation is can be very nonspecific. And um, in modern medicine, um, there's much more use of molecular analysis, where we now know that the cancers are driven and characterized by particular genetic and molecular mutations that develop inside of the, the abnormal cells that lead them to become cancer. So now it is advised that really every lung cancer undergo a molecular analysis. What does that mean? Well, it means when a piece of the tissue is removed, that it should be sent to a pathology laboratory where it's examined. It's examined under the microscope to determine, first and foremost, is it actually cancer? And if it has certain protein markers that can help us tell is this a small cell cancer or is this a squamous cancer or is it a non-small cell cancer? So that's an important initial analysis that a pathologist will, will do. Um, the next thing that happens is that a molecular analysis should be undertaken. In a molecular analysis, the, the DNA or the genes are uh, extracted from the cancer cells and evaluated with different methods 
One method is next generation sequencing, where a panel of genes are sequenced to determine if they have any alterations that lead to the development of the cancer. These alterations are called mutations and can be single nucleotide changes, uh, fusions, copy number changes, deletions, etc. Other methods are, are more focused. So this is where specific tests are applied to look for particular mutations. For example, for EGFR mutations or KRAS mutations, looking at one or two mutations at a time. There can also be microscopy methods where gene fusions are identified or abnormal proteins are measured. So there are really many tools that can be used to properly evaluate a lung cancer. Now, what's concerning to me is, is actually a lot of patients who have a diagnosis of lung cancer do not have their tumor properly or completely analyzed. The problem with this means that these patients are missing an opportunity for use of effective targeted therapies that can prolong remission-free intervals with uh, reduced side effects. So these are relatively recent advances where many new medicines have been created for the particular mutations that a lung cancer might have. So if the lung cancer is not actually analyzed, these therapies cannot be used. This creates a real gap. In cases where the molecular underlying mutations are not analyzed, a patient may go directly on to chemotherapy, nonspecific chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or angiogenesis inhibitor therapy. They may miss out on, on the advances of targeted therapy and immune therapy. Consequently, if you are a patient who does have lung cancer, I strongly advise that you do determine whether your cancer has been completely and properly analyzed to really determine all of the treatment options that might be available for you or a loved one. Now, the next part is um, what is the stage of the lung cancer? So the stage of the lung cancer is, is really important because it can determine if surgery can be a useful option for a patient. If a cancer is early stage, which means it's confined to part of the lung or one lung, it may be curable uh, by removing the part of the lung, either a lobectomy, a wedge resection, or even removing a whole lung. And uh, patients who, um, who have a lung removed uh, perform very well. Having one lung uh, gives still quite good vital capacity and patients can, can have a very healthy and normal life, even missing an entire lung. So having accurate staging is important. Other therapies are radiation therapy where energy, X-ray radiation or other types of radiation uh, can be focused on lesions which can cause them to respond without damaging surrounding normal tissue. So new advances in radiotherapy have been remarkable and have led to great uh, advances in lung cancer and other cancer treatment. Another type of therapy that is really exciting and I'd like to talk about is immune therapy. And immune therapy is really making significant progress for lung cancer patients. It's thought that the immune system is really important to remove cancers from a healthy person. And one theory is that every person is developing small cancers continuously uh, in, in their body, and the immune system can detect these small cancers and remove them. So we do not even know that these cancers are arising. However, some cancers have learned how to evade the immune system, uh, they've learned how to mask themselves and how to turn the immune system off. Um, one of the ways that cancers do this is by um, uh, synthesizing a protein called PD-1 or PDL one on their surface. So cancers that have learned how to do this or use this mechanism are able to shield themselves from the immune system. Fortunately, we now know how to overcome this evasive tactic that cancers have. So there's a class of drugs called immune checkpoint inhibitors. And uh, these immune checkpoint inhibitors can overcome this masking of the tumor 
and now can reactivate the immune system so that the immune system can now be attacked, the tumor and eliminate it. I'm particularly excited about immune therapies for cancer uh, because when the immune system is restored and can be reactivated against a cancer, the response can be very durable and it can be systemic. So the immune cells can travel throughout the body and attack metastasis wherever they may be residing or find stray cells from the cancer and, and really destroy them. Utilizing the immune system is a very exciting type of therapy, and it's an area where extensive work is now being done to really understand how can we improve the immune system. And checkpoint inhibitors are only one type of immune activation. Um, there are new clinical trials looking at other ways to activate the immune system through re-engineering the immune cell, something called CAR-T. This is where a T cell uh, can be programmed or re-engineered uh, to recognize a cancer cell. So the way that this works is that um, from a patient with cancer, um, their T cells or some of the T cells can be removed from the patient using a simple way to, to remove the T cells from the blood or, or from the tumor directly. And in the lab, the patient's own T cells are modified um, to be supercharged or uh, enhanced to attack um, certain antigens that are present on the cancer cells. And these modified T cells are then put back into the patient. So it's really a living medicine where the patient's own immune system has now been supercharged into super immune cells that are given back to the patient. And these immune cells can now travel throughout, throughout the patient's uh, body and basically search and destroy uh, all, all of the cancer cells. So, so this is really exciting. We're also learning that um, by mixing therapies or, or called combination therapies by, for example, mixing immune therapy with targeted therapies uh, that we can enhance the effect of both. So there, there are a lot of clinical trials underway really looking at combinations of immune therapies and targeted therapies and radiation therapy uh, to, to really help enhance uh, the treatment of lung cancer. So um, I would think that in summary, these are some of the key things we discussed today. One, lung cancer is actually a variety of, of cancers. So there's different subtypes. There's the small cell, the large cell, the non-small cell lung cancer and squamous cell. There are targeted therapies for lung cancer, and these can only be properly used if a molecular analysis is done. So it's really imperative uh, that a patient get their lung cancer analyzed and completely analyzed so that all of the many different molecular targets are actually evaluated and that um, active therapy can be identified. So I think that's a really important step. And also getting a proper pathology review uh, to determine if, um, if the cancer has been accurately categorized. I'd also like to point out if the tissue is not available that a liquid biopsy can be done. In this case, a liquid biopsy is where a blood test can be done. And from the blood circulating tumor cells can be isolated and evaluated. And also cell-free DNA that leaks out of the cancer cells can be captured and evaluated to look for those key mutations that I told you about that are linked to therapy. So a liquid biopsy can be very helpful. In addition, once a patient starts therapy, a liquid biopsy can be done again uh, to determine if the patient is actually responding to therapy or if those sneaky tumor cells are changing and whether the therapy needs to be adjusted based on evolution of the tumor. So in the future, liquid biopsies are going to be extremely important to help not only diagnose the presence of cancer, uh, but to monitor and select therapy and monitor its effectiveness over the courses of therapy. I think that in summary, there are a lot of advances in lung cancer that are very, very encouraging. And that I think patients who uh, have a diagnosis of, of lung cancer should really be aware about the importance of molecular profiling of their tumors and also about the advances that are occurring in immune therapy. They should consider standard therapies, targeted therapies and immune therapies, and also uh, the fact that there are many new innovative clinical trials opening and becoming available uh, for enrollment. Clinical trials can be a very effective method 
for a patient to, to help combat their cancer and gain access to, to very innovative, effective treatments early. So I strongly encourage patients to consider what clinical trials they might be eligible for. So um, that concludes our discussion of lung cancer today. I hope you found today's podcast informative. I'd like to remind you that we welcome commentary on our podcast. And also, if you have any specific questions or topics that we can discuss or answer in future podcasts, we'd love uh, to hear from you on that. So thank you again for listening. Uh, please look at our previous podcast. We have a, a series of topics that are available for your listening. And also um, new podcasts will become available every two weeks. So I wish you a, a wonderful day and look forward to you joining us for future podcasts. Have a great day. Thank you.